I'm Sarah Madallan, and I'm a K-5 reading and math interventionist at Sunnyside Elementary School in Minot, North Dakota. When the pandemic first hit us, and I guess when North Dakota schools were closed, we had to reinvent our teaching practically overnight. I think that was uh, a difficult challenge for everybody. You know, there were so many uncertainties those first three months. I think those were the trickiest months. However, I think those were also the months that it was teachers really came together and helped each other out. And, you know, for the most part, education hasn't really changed in the last hundred years. And so teachers that were maybe hesitant with some of the technology jumped right in and got help from teachers, you know, down the hall or actually across town um, in any way that they could to make sure that students' needs were met. You know, at that time, I think the big concern was the inequities. Not every child had a device. If we're going to provide distance education, we have to find a way to do that and being able to do it through Google Classroom or virtually was really what we were trying to do. You know, some families had iPads pads for their children or had some type of device for their kids to learn on and um, other families didn't. So those kind of inequities were really concerning. Then once we got the devices in hands, we realized that a lot of students and even families didn't have the proper training to be able to use the devices. So, you know, there were some challenges that way. You know, the teaching profession is, is one of the few professions that we go home at night worrying about other people's kids. And so, you know, during this pandemic, that didn't change. It only increased. And so um, we just want parents to know that, that we worry about their kids and, and we worry about giving them the best education we possibly can give them. And we know this is the best place for most children to learn. I believe parents can best uh, protect their children by following CDC guidelines um, and also consulting with their health care provider. But in regards to that, it's not just the families that can help keep the kids in school. It's all stakeholders that can help us. It's our entire community. That's the best way that we can keep kids right here in school. I think the experience that really stood out to me during the pandemic really revolves around um, the mental health of students. When the pandemic hit, there were so many uncertainties. Um, you know, doctors didn't have answers, family members didn't have answers, and kids really rely on the adults in their lives for answers. So with all of those uncertainties and, and all of the scrambling that was going on, the mental health of kids really was impacted. I saw that firsthand when we were able to go into the community. We were trying to make sure that they were getting online and doing the learning. But what we were really realizing was that there was so much more that was being affected. That was the social emotional learning and the mental health and the impacts that that had on our students. Keeping those kids right here in school and the community coming together to do every single thing that we can to keep those kids in school is so crucial in so many more ways than just education. Our goal at school is to provide a safe and secure learning environment for students and staff. Regarding the role of a vaccination, um, keeping kids healthy and teachers healthy, particularly those that are most vulnerable, is of utmost importance. And you know, every child is different, every family is different. So I strongly encourage families to consult with their pediatrician uh, and ask any questions that they might have regarding vaccination. I really believe it's also important for families to avoid COVID misinformation. You know, there's so much information, whether you're standing in line at the grocery store or outside in front of the school and people are talking about it. And I think it's really important for everybody to be, you know, critical consumers of that information. Any questions that they have, they should follow the CDC guidelines or contact their pediatrician or go to the North Dakota Department of Health and find accurate information rather than um, you know, listening to things that they might be hearing out, out in the community. I think it's really important to be a critical consumer and avoid misinformation surrounding COVID. As an educator, I would like to strongly encourage all stakeholders in education to work together on mitigation strategies so that we can keep our kids in school.